I will call the red, the regular session of city council meeting to order at seven o'clock. Uh, that's the pledge of allegiance. <coughs> to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we have roll call. Mayor Perry. Here. Council President Oliveras. Present. Councilor Hensley. Here. Councilor Jackman. Here. Councilor Lewis. Here. Mr. Mayor, we have a quorum. Okay, and okay, how about visitors? You forgot him. Yeah. Yeah, it's not yeah. possible. Yeah. Thank you, Dave. Tim Bartley. Okay, do we have a motion to pay, pay the bills? From, uh, what was that? I don't know which one bills we're paying. Oh, hey, April, wasn't it? April, yeah, April 21st. I've got it here on my other thing. Yeah, April 21st, the regular session. I'll make a motion that we pay the bills for April. I'll second. Uh, Mayor Perry? Oh, oh. Aye. Aye. Council President oh, Oliver. Okay. Yeah. Aye. Councilor Hensley? Aye. Councilor Jackman? Here. Councilor Lewis? Aye. Oh, yes. Aye. Motion passes. Okay. Anyone make a motion to accept the minutes from April 21st? Regular session. Accept the minutes from April 21st. I'll second that motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay. I guess now it's time for public comment. This is the time to speak to the city council or the mayor at any subject, including what is on the agenda, listed on the agenda, except for public hearings. Time limit is three minutes per person. Do we have any public comment? Dale's moved. Oh, okay. I see the people over here got coming. Yeah, yesterday. yesterday. Cool. Yeah. You? You got your, got your paperwork in for your uh, yeah. handicapped. Today. Actually, we got in today. We can't uh, act on it until tomorrow. We got to send letters out to around the community to make sure there's no disagreements for it. Out of curiosity, why is this in there? There were uh, a couple of uh, duplicate pieces of paperwork in there, so that's that is that bill was already taken care of. It was just it was, I'm just curious. So. Oh yeah, that's why I have an answer. <laughs> okay, we got city recorder's report. Yeah, we're good this time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, finance update. So cool. So the bulk of the work I've been doing, really, a lot of the last few months is getting this budget for this year sorted out and then writing the next one. And, uh, hello. Oh. And, yeah, I finally got the budget written, and it was given to everybody on the budget committee, and uh, we're on track to meet next week. So, yeah, uh, that's good. We got our uh, SP561 funds in, so that was at $60,000, and so far we spent it on the meters and a, a tablet that we're going to use to operate them and the services. So we got the invoice for the meter installation, and we had that check signed tonight. We're going to wait until the project is officially completed to send it to them. Um, basically, if we waited until next meeting to do that, that's cutting it really close to the end of the fiscal year, and I don't know how quickly they deposit checks. So. I wanted to get it signed now so that we could get it deposited with them as soon as possible, but we're not going to do it until they let us know that everything's done. Um, yeah, so that was cool. It is it is really nice to not be spending all of my time on budget spreadsheets. As much as I love it, there's a lot of stuff that needs to be done, uh, so I do get to do that now, and I'm very happy with that. And I came um, in and talked to you about some things, and all of those have been addressed? Yes. Okay. Yeah, there were... There were <laughs> There were, I think, three boxes that were filled out with some incorrect numbers on there with some previous year's um, personal services amounts, but those have been corrected. So awesome. you all get, get uh, copies of that. We will point that out at the next meeting. Uh, city ordinance organization. So that's my next big thing that I'm doing a lot of the time uh, after the uh, money is sorted out. Once you know the money, then you have to know the rules because 
we have uh, rules going all the way back to 1953 that may or may not still be enforced, and I need to know what those are. Uh, we need to make sure we're enforcing everything properly and following all of our policies uh, and getting rid of things that are no longer legal. Um, you know, big case in point is our procurement policy from 1994 that has missed 30 years worth of law changes, so that needs to get done. So what I'm doing right now is going through every year, going backwards back to 1953, and if an ordinance has been abolished, I just write down this was abolished, and if an ordinance has not been abolished, I, you know, I get that transcribed, and I think I'm back to, as of today, I finished 1981. So there's actually not much more to do beyond that. Um, I think, yeah, I think it goes back to 53, but there weren't as many ordinances passed per year before that. So it's not going to be too much of a headache. I created a second city website where I wrote, I transcribed all the ordinances and I put them on there. So rather than having to generate a PDF for a Word document, there's just a simple website where people can go and scroll through, and read everything. Um, so that's been fun. Um, one of the things I would like to do when we kind of organize our ordinances is organize them by chapter rather than by year. Um, so like we have ordinances for 1982, they deal with uh, changes to our urban growth boundary, street vacation policies, street, uh, state revenue sharing, zoning and development, water services fees, and council rules. And that's there's nothing tying them together other than the year, and I think it'd be a little smarter to kind of tie things together with the the same topics rather than just the year they were passed. So that's uh, something I would like to do once we get all of that sorted out. Kind of would make them a lot easier to find. Yeah, I and understand. Yes. yes. Yeah, I don't know. Like uh, Nick Heineck was asking about water and stuff. It's like, well, I, th I think I finally found it. It's from 1982. So, um, and it hasn't been changed. Really Which was that? The water ordinance we were talking oh, about. The uh, all of that. Yeah. Uh, next one. So the city. Oh yeah. So I, I said before the meeting started, we got some uh, state flags, or state and national flag that are both flown over the Capitol. So uh, we're gonna put them up soon, and you know, I think it's just. Cool thing to have as a city. Um, and we get these certificates signed by the governor verifying that, yeah, they were flown over the Capitol. So, yeah. And what are we doing with the old ones? We I will them find to somebody to dispose, to properly dispose of them. We'll take um, the American. Yeah, Sweet Home can't do it anymore because of their city council said that it puts off fumes or uh, yeah, noxious gases, even though they're doing it in a crematory. So maybe take them down to the American Legion. Yeah. There's a box outside <laughs> okay. with the arch around it. That's for flags. And I'm a member. Do you want me to take it? Yeah, now? I'll just get I'm going to give them to Council President Athena. Yeah. Maybe I'm the president. Yeah. Um, another cool thing, uh, me and JD toured the uh, Lebanon area radio enthusiast compound behind the hospital recently. Um, they operate kind of a a uh, standby radio network to uh, keep uh, major government agencies and other public entities communicating in the event of everything uh, going, we'll see, if like Cascadia earthquake happens or something like that, they will still be able to be set up not just to talk on the radio, but they can use radio to send emails. So uh, that's pretty cool to be able to have something like that um, in the area. I think it's really important that we support this kind of um, continuity of government uh, operation. I know not from our general fund, obviously, because we don't have a lot of money, but cities can be great pass-through entities to support um, operations like that for grants. So if they need like a new radio, and that'll be something that'll be helpful for us if all of our telecommunication systems go out, that would be the kind of thing we could get a city grant for to help them out. So, so is the Lairs a type of radio different than ham radio? Yes. Uh, no, that's just... Their oh, systems yes. were different. They're, yeah. They're more of a digital, where the ham is more of an analog. I know yeah. when Nick Heineck, when he was mayor, he was actually had a, seat, a ham radio coordination around the city for doing that kind of stuff way back. Yeah, and usually ham radios take up a lot of power too. What they showed us didn't take much power. Hmm. Yeah, so they they do presentations to cities. We want to hear more about what they're doing um, there. They have a lot more to do with Lebanon because Lebanon is such a bigger thing. So there's not as much that we could do with them, but. Um, some of them have some ideas for things that could work with them. One of them is on the uh, the fire district board, and he'd love to build a fire substation up here. That's kind of one of his pipe dreams. He'd think that'd be awesome. And he thinks it'd be it would also be good to have Sodaville available as a hub for 
emergency response if one of the dams in the area fails because um, mm -hmm. we're kind of we're high. higher up. For, so. Yeah, we can sit up and watch water go by. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, we'll be fine. I mean, we've already had the fires. It would be nice, thank God, to be close to us. us. Good time to sell your boat. <laughs> <laughs> Can I yeah. say one thing? Yeah. Um, you know, you guys were talking about the radios and stuff. If, if we ever lose on your cell phone, you can put on your cell phone what's called Signal, and it's run by the military, and you can get any type of communication. You can talk to one another in case of an emergency, and, like, I've got it on my phone because I know that if we have a... The power outage or anything like that. Yeah, that's supposed to be coming. That um, signal's a good thing to have because it's the only way you'll be able to communicate. Telegram, your internet, everything will be gone. The only thing you'll be able to use is signal. And is that so, an app? That's an app. Is it yes, just iOS or is it Android it's, too, do you know? Yes. Cool. <laughs> just uh, go to Play Store and download it's a round blue circle with white dots on the inside of it. Cool. Signal, and you can you can put all it goes off all your contacts in your phone. It'll put all your contacts in there so you can communicate with your family. Thanks. That's all. Um, Let's see. So other couple things that happened since I wrote the packet. Um, uh, Dina and I went to a meeting of all the other small cities in the area, and uh, we talked a lot about uh, kind of where where things are at, where the legislative session is going next year, and we talked a lot about water, and we learned that a lot of people talk about us, apparently. Uh, oh, in, wow. They're like, in, oh, uh, Sodaville? Oh, yeah. yeah we already, oh, I don't want to be infamous. <laughs> right. Apparently, we're a great case we study are. for water policy <laughs> and how to deal with municipal water shortages, so... Um, people just look at our history and talk about us and figure out, well, that's, this is what they did in Sodaville, so we can do it over there. But everybody's struggling with water shortages right now, and everybody needs infrastructure built to get water. So we're not alone. It was it's good to know. pretty crazy to hear people say, God, we need a well. We need a well. We need a well. We need something for water. And I thought, I really kind of thought it was just us, but apparently. It's no. going to become a real problem. Yes, it is. Not just here and not just locally, yeah. worldwide, yeah. Worldwide, yeah. worldwide, it's yeah. going to become a problem. It already is. Yeah. Although there's water out there that we don't even know that's there, yeah. it, it's going to be a problem in the short run for all well, of the world. I know Susie, when she was mayor, she brought up a thing where you can actually get water out of the atmosphere even if it's not raining. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's yeah. A we looked into that. Yeah. And I've actually put my name as um, one in one from my house, mm -hmm. and I haven't heard anything from it. But I have a dehumidifier in my house, yeah. and I get a lot of water almost every day. I yeah. dump it and put it on my plants. But yeah, that was rather expensive, yep. as yeah. I recall. Lori looked into that quite a bit too when she was here. But it may be yeah. an option down the road, hopefully not. But we have to see, see which was it. MIT just advertised one yesterday for four to six thousand dollars. That will, it's a desalination thing that we were talking about. So they've and it's it fit on the tabletop. Yep. Hmm. I've seen it. So California was big on that. The people were big on desalination, but the government said absolutely not. It's like there's all that water right there. Really? They don't know. Anyway, um, yeah, and the other thing was that today I met with, um, so one of the people we met there was one of the, the state circuit writers with the OHA. They, and that's not rodeo. No, it's not rodeo. So uh, they, basically the, the state contracts with them and pays them every year a significant fee to just do very light kind of um, early engineering treatments for cities that need um, just kind of some, a starting point for certain engineering projects. Um, so I, I didn't make any commitments or anything. Obviously, I just wanted to meet with them. I'm like, what on earth are you doing? <laughs> what is it good? Yeah, so the, the company is called Civil West. I know they've worked with the city of Sodaville before, especially in the Intertie project. Um, so it was just cool to kind of learn a little bit more about what they do and uh, what a circuit writer does. Um, I talked a little bit about our, our, our water problems, that kind of thing. So you know, they're in that capacity very, uh, you know, uh, very interested in helping us where they can. Um, and of course, obviously, there's more of a sales pitch because they want an end. They want. To, they want. To, they want. Put to in be, the door. 
Yeah, exactly. So, and that that was you know kind of very obvious. But it was, it was good to meet with them and learn and you know, just kind of know what we can get um, you know through the state's uh, paid program. But uh, I guess the question that he was asking that I wanted to know if we have an answer for is: Do we have an engineer of record for the city? And um, do mm -hmm. we want one? We did. did we did. Torelli or am I thinking? I think we've been using. I think we've been having the, losing the one Lebanon. Been helping do, do our engineer work. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, in the inner type book, I think it lists which engineering company we tended to use in the before no, I, time. I thought I heard that the one that they used for the inner tie stepped away from the city. Yeah, I, oh. I don't know that they'd want to use us back, <laughs> <laughs> but I think those are the ones we had used before. Yeah. Yeah. Not Miguel, is it? I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Well, they, they also like to do presentations to cities, so it'd be good to get them in here again, get JD talking with them. Hello, hello. Sorry I'm late. No worries. How are you doing? Doing good. All right. So yeah, that was uh, basically all, all I had to say to that. Okay. So any, uh, any questions? Okay. Now, public works. All right, we got a little bit to go through tonight. Um, City's wells produced about 522,546 gallons. City sold for 177,850 for a loss of about 9% or just under 9%. Um, the city requested bids for hauling water. And I contacted personally three local companies and it was also posted on our website. Two companies responded, only one company responded in time. Um, Ray Jackman Repair was the one that responded in time. And do you want me to tell you the amounts of the bids? Well, we'll, we'll go over that during the, the RFP. We'll do that later. later, okay. So we'll cover that a bit later then. Um, radio meet, read meters were installed today and yesterday. Um, there are, I believe, six of them that were not installed because of improper plumbing to them. Um, mostly on the customer side, I think one, maybe two, was on our side. Uh, it would be re my recommendation that we just hire a plumber and fix all of them, and that way it's done and over with. Um, otherwise, we have to have the homeowners that have the, on their side have a plumber come out and fix them. And then we got to battle with them to get it done and keep on track with them. And the we, city we, just goes ahead while we have the extra money from the meters. Right, that's what I was going to ask. Do we have extra yeah. funds in that grant? So I would just say um, it would be my suggestion that we go ahead and hire a plumber, just take care of it, and be done with it. You need a motion for that? No. So, absent those six, is everything else done in the city? Yeah. Wow, that's quick. And, and when, when did you start? Yesterday. Yesterday. That's what all the orange lines on the wow. street are really? for. Yeah, they came through yesterday with a section thing. You know, our boxes, and today they went through and put all the meters in. Just about. Yeah. A little over half yesterday. Yeah. yeah. Just under half today. Had a couple crews going. Lead crew was yeah. sucking, and the secondary <laughs> crew was putting them in. Is that what that pickup was? And you were on your, like, four different thing yesterday over in front of that lady's house? I took the lawnmower down to move one of the lids that we couldn't get moved. But, yeah. So when will they actually be functional? You'll be reading them now already. Or? I've been reading them today, cool. practicing. That's so exciting. It'll be um, in two weeks. Tim, the owner of the company, he will come back or get in contact with me, and he will show me how to look for leaks on the system. After two weeks, he says that gives you enough input to do that. And if they had some that they installed that are a little loose and dripping. We'll go back and fix them and tighten them at that time as well. So the water situation for, or the numbers for next month are going to be a little harder to figure out because of that. So, That's yeah, they're right. all but five or six, or I think, are in and running. So if you've got somebody that thinks that they've got a leak, then what do they need to do with the new meter to find out whether they do or not? Contact me. And then we'll we'll look into it, or I'll look into it as best I can at this time. Yeah. You can still look at the meter though and see it clicking away, though. Right? No, no, no. You can look at it, and I can't remember. I want to say it's every ninety seconds. It'll update the 
every 45 seconds it sends a signal out for me to be able to read. Um, but I think it's every 90 that it changes the display on the liquid crystal display. Mm -hmm. So you can look at it today and look at it in a couple hours or tomorrow and just kind of you know, go day to day for a couple days and see if you got something weird going on that way. Otherwise I can go up to it, I can pull all the information for 180 days out of it. They haven't been there that long obviously, but up to 180 days and see what's going on with it. And the mud coming out of my faucets was normal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we had a mm -hmm. few that found out that they have little screens on their faucets that they need to clean out occasionally. Mm -hmm. so. yeah. Can I ask a question about the meters? So we we generally go out and read our meter like say once a week. When you see me on the camera? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. When when we so we know how much water right. we use and if yeah. we need to cut it's back. It's still a got a gauge system. on it. It just doesn't so, turn all the time like the new ones did, or the old ones did. So if we read it once a week and it has a different reading and we can just minus the numbers and yep. Okay. That's all I want to yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I, I just want to remark that it's incredible that we got this finally done. This has been a rope that's been pushed uphill now for months and months and months, and I just want to oh, yeah, applaud months. all you the work that's gone towards this. A couple of years. A couple of years now we've been talking, but yeah. Wow. Come on, months to barely. Um, next thing I have was it would be a good idea for us, and I've talked a little bit with Jeff to get a new PLC system, um, programmable logic control system to run the water system up there. What we have is all outdated and no longer supported. So that's something we need to seriously consider. And I think Alex has got some funding that we might be able to use for that. Yeah, so in the budget for next year, we have at least 30,000 dedicated to it. I'm pretty sure we're gonna have about 5,000 or so left over from the SB5561 uh, uh, funds now that the, the meter program's completed. So I think that probably will give us about 35,000 next year that could be used for that. Yeah. So and We were thinking probably about 30. Yeah, I think it'll probably at least come in right around there. Yeah. I mean, depending on the programming and stuff like that, because it's all going to have to be completely reprogrammed. Um, it's a different language that, that it's got to go through. And, you know, I would suggest putting in a small switch out there to communicate to a couple of freak drives that it's running and, and uh, you know, the panel view. The panel view is obsolete as well. You know, it's a panel view 6 and they no longer support them. So to get a different one, you're going to have to go to a panel view 7, which, once again, it's a different language. So, um, yeah, I mean, at 35,000... I, the hardware is probably going to run you in at twenty thousand some odd, and then probably about ten thousand for programming. So, <clears throat> and I would suggest going to at least a processor uh, uh, L seventy two Studio five thousand software is what you're going to need, and that'll get you to where you can run a firmware up to version thirty, which they're up to uh, firmware version thirty two right now. So, and, it, and they go fast. So, yeah, and that's something I can contact our electrician closer. You know, I'll, I'll contact him in a month or so because we're looking at next fiscal <coughs> or annual fiscal season. Um, I will contact him and get more of an idea on pricing from him. You can call North Coast too because they're the distributor for Allen Bradley PLCs. Okay. They're out of Albany. Just ask for Aaron Michaels and. And uh, he's our inside sales guy, and just, you can use my name, I've been using Aaron for I'll probably years. get back to you on that. <laughs> like I say, they'll give, you, they'll give you pricing and stuff for the PLCs and stuff. We can go up there and look at all the cards and figure out exactly what kind of cards, because most of your cards are going to run about, you know, $3,500 per card. The processor is going to run you five to 6000 so, I mean, that's the most expensive one, more than likely, but... Okay. Well, maybe I'll get with you next month when you're on call or something. And Just go through it and yeah. figure out what we're going to need. Yeah, if you don't mind. Yep, not at all. Yeah. Um, 
Next on to parks. Vegetation is and has been cut between range hours. Um, I got some weeds that need to be taken care of all over the place. Had a tree filler come and look at the trees in the parks. Not soon enough because there's a big limb that just fell down today. But <laughs> um, the, the maple tree over in the little park across the street has some dead stuff on it that he strongly suggests that we get rid of. Have them or somebody else cut it off. And then he looked at trimming a couple of the other limbs on some and getting rid of five of the suckers down below. The three, I think, were dead. Um, but he wanted a considerable amount of money and he didn't really want the job because he's out of Philomath. He just happened to be in the area. He said to look, he couldn't recommend anybody over here, but to look for somebody closer to <coughs> a bit from So I will look for somebody closer to the Sweet Home Lebanon area that does tree falling. Uh, or, uh, oh, sorry. No, you're fine. What, you, uh, oh, I got a number I can give you. Okay, that'd be awesome. So, yeah, we'll look at that. Um, there's been a suggestion or a request to look at putting in a putt-putt disc golf course around our parks instead of a big nine-hole golf disc golf course. Just do a putting green, basically, one. I got with Lynn County Parks because they have one over in Waterloo in their park and they said that they had nothing to do with that. The um, Albany Disc Club paid for everything. They came out and did all the brush, did all the work and everything. So I might, if the council doesn't have an issue with it, I might look to them to see if they'd be willing to come over here and do something like that for us. So I have two questions. Yeah. Disc golf is yeah. the first thing. And free. then, um, what about our liability if somebody slip trips falls? They're going to be. It would be the same as it is in our parks already. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. So. But, cool. Yeah. I ask about that before we put the park in over there. If we was, if was, if was going to have a liability insurance, liability for that because all the schools took all the playground stuff out because it's you know mm -hmm. for insurance reasons. Is yeah. there really enough room for that over there? For uh, it would. What my vision is, is have two or three holes down here, one or two up here, and then maybe two or three over there, or one over there and a couple, three or four here, and something. I was just thinking it's of, just a putting course, it's not an actual driving course. So, they would know better than we would. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. But if you guys aren't opposed to the idea, I would like to look into it further. That's cool. I think it'd be awesome. I can't see putting with a disc. I keep thinking putting. <laughs> you know, it's like a frisbee. frisbee. Yeah, they have a basket that you throw yeah, I've in. I've seen it, but putting and that just yeah. don't. Yeah. 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 special disc. Same heavier than the regular frisbee. Anything 32 feet. Different designs to them for short and long disc. Yeah, I think it's 78 to 32 feet from the post is considered putting. Learn something new every day. Yeah. Pretty cool. Getting so, more people and then we're really going to need a coffee shop. And <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, streets. Um, the tree was removed from Bynum Park with the help of Perry's equipment and him and his son's help. I did not get our tractor down to Vine Street um, or Fisher. Um, but I did find out on Lynn County and I'm going to look at doing this next fiscal year again while we have the money because we're too close now to kind of squeeze the funds out and make everything okay without it being a big headache. For the federal but, grading, you mean? Yeah. Okay. For the grading, there, according to the request, the paper I have in front of me, the rate is $70 for the first half hour and $110 after that. So, for them to come down and grade that, probably a couple hours. So, and they have, they're more set up for that than we are. That's an we don't have a whole lot of streets anymore. We need to grade it. Down no. down there has got a couple of maybe. But that Fisher Fisher it, needs it. Park the corner of Park and Vines really soft and bad. Yeah. That needs some mm -hmm. love. Um, but yeah. I think Rock Street across there. I think it's got some bad spots in it too. I'm yeah. thinking. Yeah. And then we need to figure out something on Vine and Knoll down in that area where it used to be an oil mat or something down there. Yeah. It's all. It's horrible. Yeah, I know. That, that road's a mess. And 
You can't um, put gravel on it. You can't put ask. You have to either scrape it up, put asphalt in it, or just get that cold patch and put it in there. That doesn't last very long. Yeah. The only I mean, other thing I have is I would I would like to ask the whoever's on call on duty, whatever you want to call it, try to put some charge on the phone Sunday nights. That way I, I'm able to use it Monday morning. I'm going to look at getting a some double cigarette lighter and some other stuff for the pickup. It means i got to keep the radio read meter stuff charged and be able to charge the phone in that pickup too. But if, if I could get it back with a little charge on it, it would be helpful. <laughs> So that's all I have. Any questions? I have a question on that phone. Uh, I got the cord, but uh, the this part that charges actually, that's the part that really determines whether the phone takes the charge or not, isn't it? The part that plugs in? Yeah. Most people will plug it into their computer. Yep. So. Yep. Not any USB. I got computer. I could. I'm talking about the people using this phone. Yeah, city phone. I know. I'm not talking about any phone in general. So, but, yeah. Uh, like I said, I've got I've got all I got all kinds of plug-in ports for for one tens, yeah. but even my cell phone I use, some of the charges will not charge it. Yeah. They charge it at still percent. I mean, you can plug it in for five hours. I'll take it back yeah. dead from you. It's okay. okay. <laughs> I'm just saying. I like said I will try that. Yeah, I'm just, <laughs> if, if somebody can yeah. help with that, it's yeah. great. If yeah. not, that's <clears throat> yeah. I just I just, said, I just wondered if he had, if he had that special <laughs> special adapter for the plug-in port. No, I don't. Okay. I don't know about, I plugged it in and then it wanted to do an update on it. Yeah. So. You didn't plug it into my computer. The out of my computer is it's probably to de 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 deprogram this thing. Is there a pin for that? I mean, if somebody leaves a text or something like that, is there a way to get in there to see it? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 1880. Yeah. Oh, okay. If somebody calls, <laughs> yeah. Right. If you got to look at a voicemail or something, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I didn't know that when I had it. I thought, hmm, well, nobody called, but good, <laughs> good thing because I couldn't open it up to you see it. You could always call me on my phone yeah, and I get that information. <laughs> yeah, I would have. All it kept doing to me is wanting to do the updates. Uh, I haven't so, had that problem, so thank you for taking care of that. Yeah, as yeah. <laughs> soon as I plugged it in and charged it up, then it shut itself off and updated huh. itself. So. Oh, it's right. Let's do that. That's an AT&T yeah. for you. <laughs> well... Yeah. I don't know what's going to act like on me this weekend. We'll uh, find out. But, you know, it's pretty cool, Robert. You never rang all weekend long. Yeah. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. It rang a couple times yesterday. Uh, have a good um, time at the, at, the, at the festival, or you got to switch to coming weekend, isn't it? That's this yeah. weekend. Right? Yeah. I went down to visit my daughter over that last weekend, so. Give me the that's number. Good. Call them. Call mine. Oh. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Mayor, I had actually one more thing I wanted to add. Our audit for the last fiscal year is basically about done. So, finally, mm -hmm. at long last. Uh, so I believe that next city council meeting we'll have to review it and approve it. But that's uh, wow. Yeah. That's that. Yeah. It made it a lot easier since since our auditor, auditor works with uh, our accountant here works at the auditor office so we can keep things. Uh, no, it's a different company. Different company. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Anyway. Yeah. That's yeah, usually recommended. Right. Yeah. But they work together. Yeah. Yeah. They yeah they know each other. They have a relationship. They do have a good relationship. Yeah. So that's that was good. one other thing to add. Yeah. Okay. On to new business. Yeah. New business. Resolution 22-04, adopting ordinance 20, uh, adopting ordinance 2201. Is that? Yep. So this was uh, looking at some amendments to our city zoning ordinance. Uh, based on conversations we had last night, the council voted to initiate an amendment, and these are the amendments. They were reviewed by the attorney, and the attorney gave us his blessing. So uh, we had a few different things. So first off is a, uh, a notice of hearing. So right now the notice of a hearing for a zoning and development ordinance is in uh, Chapter 8, which doesn't exist. So we uh, delete the references to Chapter 8 and say that uh, we are going to uh, just use the same notification for ordinances that's listed in the city charter rather than a fictitious chapter. Uh, the ones that come in additionally... Um, I removed a reference to the city administrator since that position no longer exists and put it in there with myself. Um, we wanted to update the fee schedule. The, uh, fee, when the last time there was a change, the zoning ordinance referred to Ordinance 1107, which has been uh, since superseded by Ordinance 1701 for a different fee schedule. So 
Um, we're not going to reference a, an abolished fee schedule in the ordinance anymore. Um, and then there is a uh, consideration to uh, allow additional six months requests for um, somebody who... Oh, actually, so we are going to integrate properly uh, the section about living in an RV uh, to this, so that's what this ordinance does. Um, we are also going to add in the additional six months extensions if there's a national emergency of some sort, and that is written in there. Um, let's see, what's the other thing? Um, an additional change in that section. Um, we're making sure that we're referencing uh, this section rather than a different one, so we just kind of, it was section 4032. Now I've, I've deleted a reference to 4032 in there and replaced it with 3.108 because this is going to become section 3.108. Uh, and then lastly, we add section 3.109, which is uh, temporary use of a recreational vehicle uh, due to uh, economic hardship. Um, so I just put some language in there, um, and the attorney said that was okay. Um, I know our council president had a question about how do we assess economic hardship. Uh, my idea was to look at and uh, require anybody to submit any documents that were submitted for other public assistance to verify that they are suffering from economic hardship in order to approve it. Um, anybody have any thoughts on that? Do it. Okay. Do we want to do a specific type of public assistance or we just want to leave it open to... <clears throat> I don't know that we can capture everything that might yeah, feasibly think, be out there. <laughs> I think we yeah. ought to leave it open for Just interpretation of time, right? Yeah, give it to the discretion of the council. Okay. 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 One comment about that. Sure. Um, in the, in the, it, you're talking about 109, right? Yes. Okay. Um, can you put somewhere in there... Um, Hardship and safety of children. Safety of children? Yes. Um, that would fall under hardship, I believe. Well, because... Well, it does say specifically economic hardship. Okay. Hmm. So... My home is a, a safety zone for yeah. three little girls. <clears throat> and um, I just want to make sure that that is... Um, they know that that's their safe place. And you can look at them right in your eye and ask them where's your safe place, and it's pigging ranches. Okay. Well, will they be living in an RV? They're, they live in and out of my house. But do so, they live yeah. in an RV? This no, is, this is this specifically about RV. RVs. Right. Yeah. So this they play, they, they store this, the clothes. That's just for living in an like RV, that. so it yeah. wouldn't have yeah. anything to do with living in your house. Yeah. They, okay. they can do that all they want. Okay. And that's awesome. Right. Yeah. We, we support helping people out. Uh, just so you know, the, uh, the ordinance was uh, posted uh, everywhere it was supposed to be, and there were copies available in City Hall uh, during regular office hours, and that means we are allowed to pass this uh, with a reading by title only, if we prefer. Uh, so. so what do you need from this point? Uh, so there would need to be a motion that the ordinance be read by title only and adopted. I'll make a motion that we read the ordinance by title only for adoption. We have a second on that. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Aye. Before we do that, I have to read it by title. Okay. 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 <laughs> that was just on the motion. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Try it. Yeah. So I'll jump again. I'm going to get out of your old. I know, right? Yeah. Won't be as long as last time. <clears throat> This is Ordinance 2201, amending Ordinance 1902, the City of Sodaville Zoning and Development Ordinance. Shorter title than the last one. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, the ordinance has been read by title. So now we need to make a motion to pass it, right? Uh, no, so the motion, the, the motion was to read by title only and then um, adopt it. So now we can call a roll call vote on that. Okay. Or if we could just say, all in favor, aye. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? No problem. Okay. Got it solved. <laughs> yeah. That's that. <laughs> okay. Next we got uh, Mr. Contract Review Board and Community Services Consortium. 
and I gave you your uh, your cheat sheet. Okay, I gotta read all this too. <laughs> so okay, I got a gavel in the end. Okay, Dollar Tour Public Hearing, City of Soderville, Contract Review Board at uh, seven forty-two. Seven forty-two. Okay, we got stuff. Staff, dis staff discussion request that the city record a review of the contract. A con contact, contract, yeah. Yeah. So, um, we talked about last time this Community Services Consortium is a nonprofit uh, kind of government service uh, catch all agency in uh, Albany that serves Lynn County and the area. Uh, and one of the programs they provide is utility billing assistance. Uh, so that uh, they, they serve a lot of people with different utility billings. Uh, water utility billing specifically needs to be uh, made through an agreement with the city council. So uh, they provided us with a contract that was given to everybody uh, to read through and approve. Um, so once that happens, the agreement is signed. We basically allow them to take over paying anybody's utility bills if they uh, need help or they are in arrears and need help that way. <coughs> so, Plus, that time? Any questions? I, I did notice that it did say in their arrears, so yes. that was nice. <laughs> and you you still believe the fact that Lynn County that's not on there was just a typo? Yeah. Okay, cool. So to understand this, we need to approve to have somebody allow the consortium to... Pay their water bill. To pay their water bill? Yeah. yeah. They can't just go and work with them themselves? No. Nope. Mm. Because we have to agree to... To accept. Their, yeah, on their checks are going to be written by the consortium. Oh, okay. So we okay, need okay, to, okay, as a gotcha. sign the contract. And if you read the contract, there's real specifics about if it's overpaid, if the person dies, if they're no longer yeah, in service, yeah. and so... Yeah. I understand that. So, what do you need from us? Cheat sheet. Which one's this? Three? Pull that up Three. Ten B contract review board. Ten B. Yeah. Yep. So, can we just do the suggested motion? Um. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, we had council discussion, and uh, my step is uh, requesting public, public comment. Public comment on, on contract. Any other comment about this? About the consortium? Yeah, yeah. It doesn't have to be okay. public comment. I mean, it's just, yeah. if, anyone, if anybody wants to talk, then now's, now's yeah. the chance. If not, we're all good. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, uh, then you will close the public hearing on this contract. I close the public hearing on this, con on this contract. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is there any additional council or staff discussions about this? No. Nope. Okay, I'll take, we, we take a motion to entertain, uh, entertain a motion to vote to approve the contract. I move to adopt the contract for water assistance provisions between Community Services Consortium and City of Sodaville. I second it. All in favor? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. City Council meeting resumes. Uh, well, the, no. we are still on the contract review board section. We just c closed the public hearing on that okay. contract. The next item is a contract with Ray Jackman Repair. Oh. So, okay. we, will, we will call forward a public hearing on a new contract while we are still in session as the contract review board. And then once that item is done, then we will resume the City okay. Council. So, so, you will have to gavel in a new public hearing for um, this contract, but not for the session. Okay. I know it's fun, right? Now we open a meet open a contract a review for Ray Jack repair to be allowed to haul water for the city of Sonoville when we out of water this summer. Okay, you said you were gonna discuss what J D had to say about the bids that the I received bids and everything. Yes. Okay. We received two bids for the water hauling. Um, one from obviously Ray Jackman Repair and another one a day late from No Drought. Um, no Drought's proposal was to charge us $350 an hour plus fuel surcharge to haul the water. Um, Ray Jackman Repair is to, is, is to charge us $130 with a fuel surcharge. Um, so no drought is offering to charge us 2.7 times higher 
than Ray Jackman, and No Drop did not get their paperwork in on time on top of that. So I suggest that we go with Ray Jackman this year. Um, with last year, just for knowledge, the trucking companies um, charged between 125 and 135 an hour, except for they were not reliable. And we ended up going to what people have since started calling the ant farms. And those were charging for the two of them 100 bucks an hour a piece. So that was 200 bucks an hour. So this bid is still better than that, but it's comparable with what everybody else was doing last year. How many hours a week were they hauling during our driest time? They were hauling. They were hauling about eight hours a day, two days a week. So but they were charging hours. us ten hours a day. Because they had because to drive from Florida. Yeah. But basically, they were hauling up to here for sixteen hours a week. Right. At how many gallons? Two thousand per. Those. 1600. Those were sixteen fifty, I think. Their tanks. Sixteen hundred. Yeah. Oh. Well, what is your tank? Forty six. Forty six. Forty six hundred. And the one that No Drought was talking about is fifty two hundred, but he's also got smaller ones, so he would potentially be using back and forth between the small and big. And I bet you Jackman's won't leave. They all, all the they all the do. Yeah. They all have vents. And they're not, those are trucks aren't baffled, so they can stay clean without getting contaminated. Right. So and without the baffles, you it's have to wash. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have to vent them. Yeah. Or you'll turn them inside out. Yeah. With them. pressure differences and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And it's very conditions, temperatures, all that stuff will blow apart. The science. Uh, any questions on the bids from council? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so do you all have a time to review the contract that was drafted? And you've made the edit on the year? Yeah, so as amended for 2022. You said you did have a contract coming up? Yeah, it was in the council packet. Oh, it's in the Yes. You can so, it's out. You know this is the 2020. Okay. Yeah, so we will be approving the contract as amended, so... Mr. Jackman, not Councilor Jackman, for the purpose of this item. Um, so we will be approving the contract as amended with that year change from 2020 to 2022. If there are any amendments you'd like to propose, we can consider those as well. So. Yeah, look at that. And this is the whole thing. Yeah. Okay. Give me a little time to review it. Is that okay, or do you need an answer right now? Take a break for 10 minutes. Um, yeah, if the mayor is okay with that. Yes, sir. Can I ask, uh, request a real big favor? I just got out of surgery on my prostate. And if at all possible, I would like to speak to the water thing on the very back here. Uh, yeah. And let me get the heck out of here. So, we can't really do we it can, now. We can, can we? Yeah, so we can table this item while Ray is reading. Okay. okay. Um, and then um, we can move to the next one. And then so, that, so I make a, well, I just tell, I got a table, table this. Uh, you say uh, you move to uh, recess the contract review board. Okay. I move to recess the contract review board for some other business. Okay. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, next. Must be next. Yeah. Uh, so oh, let's oh. just open up item 11A. Thank you. Yep, so that is the, the water waiver request. So I finally found the city's old water ordinance. It's primarily from 1982. And there are um, applicants. So the it says about a special contract is that an app somebody can apply for water requirements that are unusual or large uh, and that would be how we are allowed to uh, extend uh, to a city resident a change to kind of the other rules about water use so yeah, I, in reading this that the only thing on that that i would like to uh, either change or include uh, this would be not be a new well it would be upgraded the existing well okay <clears throat> used water for feast water only and stuff, not for cooking up to a set house or just. No, this would be just strictly used for irrigation purposes. Yeah. 
just to be nosy, but do you, what do you grow? Do you grow a big crop, or do you just have a great garden? I have a great garden and a very large lawn. Oh, cool. Yeah. You know, it's about 10 acres or so down there, I think, mm -hmm. something like that. But Six and a half, half. Huh? Six, Six and a half? half? Okay. Yeah. I know there's quite a lot of acreage down in there, and then just back in the trees. Yeah. 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 I'd like to water my lawn. Yeah. <laughs> so. So what did... Yeah. yeah, so right now, um, because it's been since the 80s, since I think this has been touched, we don't actually have special contracts in place that can be used. So what needs to be done is I need to write one up, and the city council needs to approve a special contract, and the city attorney also needs to approve it. And then uh, we can sign it with uh, Mr. Heineck, and that'll be that. So um, I wanted to put that up so we make sure we know what the special contract is going to be about, so it can be written and approved by everybody. <clears throat> now what you got you gotta redrill a well or you're just gonna hook it back up or aren't you? Uh yes. <laughs> yes, yes, uh, yes. I'm going to do what is necessary. I have two wells on my property. Yeah. I'm going to do what is necessary to provide water for the irrigation of the wife's garden and uh, that other part of it. And she had, we have a lot of property in there that we're yeah. responsible for. <clears throat> so if we've got a well that's already working it's an old well, but it's already working. Uh, yeah, it's an old well. Well, I'll take it that way. It's so not I'm talking it's, about mine. It, oh, <laughs> yours, yeah. Yeah, that's same sort of situation. Yeah. yeah. I've got two on my property also, so it's going to be a set. We're going to have to, a lot of the citizens will probably use this for irrigation or fire prevention. I'm on with your mind for fire prevention, basically. Mm -hmm. And you had that fire up on the hill, but it's got a little too close, it's getting a little too close to my, to my domain, and I will not leave my stuff. I'll die with it first. So now I'm, I'm thinking that this probably isn't going to be measured by our city meters, which means that's not really a contract that we need to enter no, into. There, there are others out there that have private wells. As long as they're not hooked up to the water system or to the residents, it shouldn't be an issue. It should be a yes. non-issue in my eyes. Um, there are other people, especially down in that area, that have their own private wells that they do use for irrigation. Yeah, there are, there are a lot of wells in there. We didn't have the water, well, state of water system until 1980, and city incorporated in 18, 1880, so... The main thing is they're not hooked to their house, and right. there's yeah. no way of cross-contamination yeah. backflowing into our system. So, in, go ahead. The original, and Roger and Ray can verify this, there was an original addendum to the charter, or whatever it is, prohibiting new wells for repairing old wells at one time. Am I, am I correct? I believe so. Yes. When they put the water system in, they want to do that because they want to force people onto the water system. Well, right. And uh, yes. evidently this gentleman hasn't been able to find that exact thing, but this is basically what it would be, and it would be for people like you or myself that have wells that need resistance, need to be upgraded, or and not necessarily justifying drilling new wells, but just upgrading the system the wells that people have on their property and allow them to make them usable and reduce the demand on the water of the city of Soderville. So I have two questions. I could have sworn that in the before time, I yeah. was told that there was the idea of not having people use the wells because it would contaminate with the, our city's wells, but also because it would hurt the water table for our city wells. Is that still an issue? Okay, the water table for our city wells is all uphill. Mm -hmm. And we draw all of our water from uh, what, four wells, I guess it is now, is it four or three? Four. Yeah. Four. <clears throat> and those wells are up stream from the areas that we're talking about and doing this thing. We don't really have so, control over that anyways because no. we, you know, we're such a small area mm -hmm. that all the surrounding areas, yeah. the farms, the, you know, the place up yeah. here by uh, all the homes, the dynamite, yeah, and what, what happened to the city of Soderville? <laughs> they all suck out of our, so we don't have control okay. of it anyways. What happened when the city of Soderville <clears throat> put in the original wells, they did not, and it was a big mistake, uh, put in for water rights or water protection on those wells. And as a result, and as a result, a lot of housing and stuff is built upstream from our water, and that's why the city of Soderville has so much problem with their water right now. Is because there is an awful lot of there's golf courses built. There was a, a lot of homes that went in and it set wells up. 
that are drawing upstream from our <coughs> water reserves here in the city. And that's why the, uh, you have the problem you have today. The wells down here in the lower city draw off of, a, I believe, a different aquifer, if I'm not mistaken. But, uh, but it, anyhow, they are downstream from our wells that the city uses. So it, what, what we're talking about here would have no effect on the uh, wells that the city is drawing from. So then do we need to make a differentiation? I live on Westview. Yeah. My neighbor asked me about putting a well in for irrigation. Yeah. So can he put in a new well for irrigation? That, that's something you would have to decide. I'm, like I say, well, just reading the words, that's that, right? what it says. Yeah. If you need a well, you need to apply for yeah. um, the thing. So the city. then we, yeah. Yeah. we need it's to possible. talk about this it's, being location yeah. specific, that it's not everybody in the city of Sotaville, right? Well, I would say it would be, people that this would involve would be anyone, the very majority of the people are downhill from the aquifer that we're drawing the city of water off of. That, so, yeah, our deepest, our deepest, deepest well is well number one up there is 350 feet, but down here you're 500 feet below that. Just or not quite that, but pretty close. Yeah. So then my neighbor who lives right next to me on Westview, if he wants to do a new well, I don't know, I don't think he has a well, but if he wants to do a new well, he needs to apply. Okay. That's what it yeah. says right there. Then that'll go through the county too. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's just like I say, what I'm doing is just refurbishing, <laughs> refurbishing old right. wells and uh, refurbishing old wells down in the below the aquifer. But That's if right. somebody in your area or your area, and I'm sorry, I don't know where you guys live, wanted to do a new well, would you have to apply? Would think so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. you, you, you would have to apply to put any well in in the city. Put any new one. You do. Yeah. Uh, I think you got to do that anywhere. Yeah, Not yeah, only in Sotaville, but, but yeah, like I say, out on a farm. But, but yeah. to refurbish what you already home. have. Yeah. <laughs> refurbish what we're doing. So I'm right okay. For. Thank you. Yeah, I can answer that question. Does that uh, have a well? Answer any questions about everybody. Yeah. Oh, really? Oh, no, nobody up on the hillside. That, 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 that was all farmland. That was all farmland. The water spins in the morning. That's where you're at. That was an open forum. That was an open forum. In the well, it's been a bit of an eighty. So uh, just to make sure, it sounds like we're just going to let you uh, rehab your your old well and then. Uh, yeah. Okay. Be on your way. Be on your way. Well, thank you very much for your patience and for your uh, letting me get through this thing because. Uh, Today's been an interesting day. Yeah. Have a good night. The only thing I would suggest is that when he does it, that somebody from the city, probably me, go down and verify that it's not in any way hooked up to our system. It's not going to be. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that is something that is a requirement that you have to have. And that would be something that if I were the city, I would be doing. Right. So, right. Thank you, Nick. Thanks, Nick. You're welcome. Yeah. My wife will be happy. <laughs> Why is that? I have a well. I'll have him get it tuned up this summer. He can water, water your lawn. Water. Water. She has just, a just a we just built well. that rad garden last summer. That's all she it wants. It did. I mean, all the properties up here had a well before they put city water in. That's what they that have. I have. Since well. we've been so hardcore about you know, know, not using outside water, you know, well. people drains in the market. <laughs> bringing up concerns about this, that perhaps we need to put something in our newsletter or our site. That clarifies this. So when you're watering and people aren't, so that people aren't like, well, how come he's watering? He's wasting water. You know, just to be proactive. Well, you know, I think I to leave it alone, let people call and complain, then I go in and inspect it yeah. and make sure that they are doing it with their own private will. That's what we've been doing in the past. Yeah. yeah. I think that's where we need to stay. Yeah. yeah. I think, I think, I think so too. that's true too, well, because I got my two wells. I, I've been watering my trees around my property down there, my little piece of property off one of my hand of that's so 35 foot. But that one fellow that used to be on council who owns the trailer across from me, he was running a freaking hose from his well all the way to the freaking old Yoder house. Hmm. I mean, he did that for two two summers straight. I was surprised that no one even yeah, noticed it. Before me, but... Huh. I don't know his name. Doug? Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, that, that well scared. had been up and running for a while. Yeah, and there's several of them down there that I had complaints on last year. Hey, they're using the water. So I'd go down and look at it. They're using their own private well. It's totally fine. It's not hooked up to the city in any way. Thank you for clarifying that. Okay, okay. so. The city water. We need to go back, Bubba. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Mine's good for your. My little water, too, is all iron. 
We need to go back. Iron and uh, right? Yep. Did you read the contract? Yeah, yeah. The only thing that I don't like is I need the uh, fuel surcharge to be adjustable. Yeah. For fuel prices. Yeah. Oh, you think okay. they're going to go up? She says with tongue in cheek. Yeah. <laughs> As right. my fuel bill the other day, yeah, they would not. <laughs> has nothing to do with council, but if anybody can explain to me, on the same gas that they pump into the things at a gas station, how come one day it costs it's more than the It's based off day? the futures market. Yeah. It's all speculation. It makes no sense to anybody it's except like for the moment. they didn't do that for the gas. It didn't go up, so. No, it's all Goodbye. based on speculation. Oh, You're not supposed to be smart enough to figure out that's what they're doing. What well, doesn't oh, make sorry. sense well, is, you, you know, that they said that, you know, they have an issue with all the drilling and permits and stuff for the oil companies mm -hmm. to produce it because of the carbon and stuff, but then they decided not to use the high octane gas during summer <laughs> and just go with the polluted shit. That's why your gas mileage is down four miles a gallon. So you're getting yeah. less gas mileage, but you're paying higher, higher prices for it. So we'll strike where it says 5% fuel surcharge and instead say with a fuel sur an adjustable fuel surcharge? Yes, that would be okay. okay. Should there be a cap on it though? No, it's based on the fuel. It's based on the fuel. You you gotta, just, he's got to pay, he's got to make, oh, he's so got to be able to pay for his fuel. It's based out of, at the pump, yeah. you know, basically yeah. what's happening. There's, the there's gotcha. a formula that you go online. Yeah, the Fed's got a you, formula for it. Okay. That you okay. figure your surcharge for fuel. Right. It's a government based right. X amount of dollars for fuel and then how much you charge per mile. I was just saying mile. that, you know, not, not just you, but any contractor can't come in and just say, well, I'm going to charge 25% surcharge. Like, no. <laughs> what was the other one? What was no, the you're surcharge? No, <laughs> <laughs> right? you're not. Right? That's what I'm drought. saying. You know, we should put a cap on it. <clears throat> um, schedule of the week from primary, day deliveries, plus fuel charge. Fuel surcharge will be added anytime fuel is above three dollars a gallon threshold. So, which we added <laughs> twenty five dollars a gallon. <laughs> right. Two years. And Trump was in office. His goes yeah. on even more on the depth than that. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's coming back. He's coming back. The council uh, should read that. You guys want a copy of it? For pleasure reading, please. Perhaps. In here, Do you want it today? Do you want Alex to print them off right now? or you got to read it. I, I would like to read it at some point. Yeah. Okay. It would be edu educated. Well, if you're the only one who cares, when you're done, if you can get it back to me. Okay. So well, I think we're I just going to prove it, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, move it as amended with the, the change from 2020 to 2022 and then with the adjustable fuel surcharge. Yes. Okay, we have a motion to accept this uh, water, water plantation service agreement as amended. Um, Ray, you have to abstain, of course, from the vote. To make a motion that we accept, um, it's not a resolution, is it? Just the contract. The contract from 10C uh, from the review board for Ray Jackman repair to uh, run our potable water for 2022-2023. As amended. As amended. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> Opposed? You, gotta, you say you're staying. Okay. Okay. This vote. okay. Motion. Just so we know, uh, Councilor Jackman will not be allowed to vote on the budget or any supplemental budgets for the next fiscal year because that is when he will be uh, engaged in that contract. But that uh, doesn't really restrict anything else he does. So that means I don't have to come to the budget meeting. You don't want a free dinner. <laughs> hey now. <laughs> yeah, I believe. If you're if you're required to abstain, you may still be allowed to make some comments on the budget. Exactly. Uh, it's just the, the voting, so that's you. You can even submit some in writing. Uh, one of our budget well, that's the next item we're at, right? Budget committee overview. So okay, I guess next thing on the agenda, are we down to that? Yep. So that's the budget committee budget. Okay. So, only thing to add to this one is that we do have one vacancy uh, now, and that's for 2021 through 2023, and uh, city resident, former councillor, Mr. Anthony Morales, has uh, 
uh, said he's interested in being on the budget committee, so if the mayor would like to uh, nominate him, um, we can... Okay, I nominate uh, Anthony Morales for being on a budget committee. I second it. Uh, so there, there does need there needs to be a motion to approve the nomination and a second. So I need a motion to approve the nomination. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. What the heck was sorry, that? Sorry. So the city <laughs> charter gives the, the mayor the authority to uh, to nominate people to committees, and then the council the authority to approve or disapprove the nominations. <laughs> so even though. He's, uh, this is different than your council president nomination, where anybody can nominate in second. Here, there's just an extra step of Roger has to nominate somebody, and then the councilors among themselves has to say whether or not uh, they want to, one, vote on him, and then two, uh, vote on him after that. So, well, what we're doing right now is that Roger has submitted a nomination for a city committee to the council. A member of the council has to uh, move the nomination, and another member has to second it in order for it to be voted upon. I can't have anything to do with the budget, so I can't vote. Actually, you can vote for budget committee members. Oh, okay. um, it's just voting on the actual budget itself. Right. So. I move that we accept the nomination of Anthony Morales <laughs> to the budget committee I'll, for... I'll second it. <laughs> Woohoo! All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Now we got to vote on him? <laughs> no, no, no. We, we just... Yes. <laughs> we have to vote on voting Great. on him. And then after oh. we vote about voting on him, then we'll vote. <laughs> Right, holy smokes! You want to we're going to be on this subject the rest of the night. You can't do that twice. <laughs> okay, so now we're down to old business. Uh, and waiver. that was we what that? we just did with you. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, we're, we're done. done. We're okay. Done. Oh, you have to say you closed the hearing with the contract. Oh, you yeah. By the way, I got Actually, we figured that out. Never mind. We're down. Okay. Okay, so now we're down to old business. You got to close the thingy. Yep. Yeah. Oh, what out. Uh, I'll close the meeting first. No. One, one second. Go ahead. Oh, he's <laughs> catching up with this. We're good. Like I say, I'm not good at this. We know you're that. Great. <laughs> you're doing great, Roger. <laughs> you're doing fine. Though. I know. You're no, awesome no, 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 no one else wants it, right? <laughs> you're <laughs> a superstar, and we yeah. appreciate you. <laughs> okay, yeah, so the next one is public comment. So. Yep. Public comment. I just want to thank everybody for oh. doing a great job. Oh. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'd like to add to that and tell you guys that you you are doing a great job and there's a lot getting done. And I think a lot, pardon me for saying this, but I think a lot of it is Alex. Having some that knows this, someone, someone that researches what we need to know in exactly, the city. Get back, get back exactly. Get us back on what's supposed to be. Get us back on track. Yeah. Get us back on track. I think JD's done a fine job. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Well, yes. well I, I wasn't done yet. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think the two people we got a good team. Have been we got a very good team here. Okay, you said it. Yeah, very yeah. good team. Okay, shut up, Peggy. That's <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. I couldn't do this without JD. So thank you. So you guys are awesome. All of you are awesome. Seriously. Thank you. Okay, we got any council reports? Actually, I'd like to talk about the meeting that um, Alex and I went to. I didn't want to go, but since um, JD was unable, I felt there somebody needed to represent the city with Alex. And it was it was a very good meeting. Um, I learned a lot, and I think it was good to have representation. One of the things <laughs> that they brought up was looking at community engagement and what an increase it was when they went online and had these broadcasts, and trust me, I am the last person in this room who wants my fat little face on any kind of a computer, or any kind of, you know, Facebook or YouTube or whatever, but I really think we need to move forward with getting into that. And so I'm sorry, you're saying live streaming? Or something, the live streaming meetings. our meeting. Really? Because I know when I commuted to um, Eugene to work in the hospital, I could never make it to the meetings because it was so late. Yes? Perfect idea. You can be the one filming it, so you're behind the camera you and just yeah. turning it to whoever's talking. Mm -hmm. I throw two cameras in the army with my face, so um, I really think that we need to consider I'm that. To Microsoft Teams, yeah. that's what we use for our PFAC meetings mm -hmm. for our doctor's offices, yeah. which is really cool. Oh, yeah. I've used tons, but I, I do have my own paid Zoom account, and there I you go. carry live streaming equipment with me 24-7, so we can do that whenever the council wants to start. If we want to do that 
Uh, starting with the budget meeting next week, we can make that happen. That's just that's too early. I say wait until next fiscal year. Wait until the beginning of the fiscal year. No. Whoever you can, can be, be really busy if you run into yeah. some yeah. Yeah. No, I, I set that up and it's just it stays in the corner and that's that. All right. Well, this is the thing. If she's gonna run the camera, then she's gonna be really dizzy because everybody's <laughs> gonna be just gonna be like this all in the room. Oh, It'll be different blur. than I am now. <laughs> It'll be a blur in this, blur in this camera lens. And then we'll really screw with you. We'll have Jeff Dunham come in here. And <laughs> <laughs> that would be fun. So, do you have a preference for when you'd like to start that? It's your idea. I, you know, there's no time to suffer like the present, so yeah, maybe with next perfect. month's meeting. Start next council meeting? Next I cannot lose 20 pounds by then, so oh well. <laughs> yeah, yeah maybe. Cool thing is, if you do a video recording, you don't have to do written minutes. So, so I, I do have a question. A question. You say it's in the in the corner. Yeah. So, do I know? In in at least I think in Oregon, somebody can be recorded, and if they're in public, they don't have to give permission. But do we need to have like does Peggy? You know, do they need to say yes, it's okay, or don't place. look at me? They're in or public place, yeah. Council meeting. So yeah. Okay. You kind of wave like, your like we would normally introduce ourselves at your council meeting. I mean, you go into Walmart and you're being filmed, yeah, they don't exactly. ask you for anything. Yeah. And then is there interaction from the people who attend at home? Can they like raise their hand and say, I yes. want to do they public can Depending on the system you use. We can set that up if we want. We'll be here all night. Yeah, yeah <laughs> right? So, I'm saying we wouldn't even have to attend the council. Oh, holy smokes. Yeah, you could just do this from your house. Yeah, they, they had flexibility even before COVID. The rule was that... The council can hold their meeting anywhere they want, just as long as in their jurisdiction there's a place where somebody can gather to watch it. But they removed that during COVID because we weren't allowed to go places. So that restriction's gone. Like, so we can do it without opening it for people making the meeting go till midnight. Yeah. Yeah. We can just say, here's a live stream. Watch it if you want. Okay. Yes. Like so they, if they want to come in and make public comment, they should yeah. come in here. That's what exactly. You have a gatekeeper who keeps you on track. <laughs> Like, I know J.D. hates to hear me talk, so he can be the gatekeeper. <clears throat> but I know we used to have lots Sergeant of people Barnes. come to our city council meeting. Sometimes oh, I yeah. last to tell them it's 12, 12 o'clock midnight. That's yeah. what I mean. If they want to the talk and or address the council, one, they need yeah. to be here on We had one resident in here that every time he, made it, every time he even talked about something, he says, let's be leaving the city attorney on that and talk for half an hour. Yeah, and yeah, yeah was three minutes. Yeah. Yeah, but three but minutes when, when for three hundred. When, <laughs> when you got big meetings, it takes a lot. Well, also, you look at what time it is, and you look at your council meetings. Your council meetings normally run from seven until eight fifteen, and if you state that right up front before you start your Zoom call, then we usually run till eight fifteen. Well, <laughs> some of our meetings take a little longer because we right. got more more on the agenda. Right now, we're kind of give or take Alex, five. Alex has got to get stuff straightened out for us. We got to have less and less on the plate. That's right. Over. Yeah. Well, it's all about just staying within the structure. Of yeah, that. that's what I'm talking about. I mean, you got Facebook, you're on Nextdoor app, good idea. I mean, let's, let's see. Let's see. My, my problem is I've been sitting there for so long that back in the old days, everyone would get to talk and say the piece, and now we're trying to get it more structured. And I'm, I'm still old school. I don't, I don't, I'm not an old doggy. It's hard to do those tricks. problem yeah. is you don't want to lose a little bit of that, right? right. I mean, that's part of what... Yeah, that's you why know, it's small city is about. So you you want to get, a little bit of an get open the community forum. involved in it, so it's more open forum, so people are willing to come to meetings. Hopefully, I mean, you just can't have a free for all. But right. like I say, I mean, structure controlled chaos. Goes, yeah. controlled I have chaos. a question. Does anybody know anybody by the name of Raymond Chong? <laughs> no. Ever in the no. whole world? No. no I, oh, I'm here in this area here. Because okay, remember you had a hard time getting off of next yes. door. Okay, Raymond Chong has created Sodaville that goes clear over to the river, clear down to Second Street, clear out to Old Saniam Highway Road, <clears throat> uh, clear up on Saniam Terrace. Yeah, that's a next door thing. Yeah, I'm just saying. I'm asking the question: Does anybody know Raymond Chong or how to get a hold of? Him? No, no. Because no. I'm, I'm on. I want to. Would like to talk to him. Yes. Okay, so where are we at now? Adjourn. 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 Adjour
Opposed. Opposed. Nay. <laughs> oh, no. Opposed. No, no nays. Let's get no nays. What do you got, Jay?